Okay, I'm going to finish reading from Never Dare a Wicked Earl. He glanced at Cecilia's bedchamber window. For the child's sake, he needs to keep his wits about him. He stood over his wife's grave and promised to do his best for the child. He wouldn't fail Laura, not again. His gaze returned to the antiquated pistol. The ornate gun probably weighed close to five pounds. Adele's hand already trembled from the effort to hold it still. He'd a better chance of surviving if she kept the barrel pointed low, away from his chest and abdomen. Sweeting, why don't you give me the gun and accompany me inside? We'll sit and chat about what I've done that has you so distressed. He inched closer. She stepped back. Her wide-eyed expression looked deranged. She waved the gun. Stay back, Hayden. I swear I'll shoot. He raised his hands, palms out, as the movement beyond her shoulder caught his attention. A short figure walked toward them. The person appeared distorted, a body too narrow in comparison to its upper girth. The figure stood, stepped under the illuminating light of a lamppost. Damnation. Young Jimmy McGivney. The newsboy carried a bundle of the morning paper, hefted on the on his narrow shoulders. So shoulders. At any moment, Adele would hear Jimmy's footsteps straping the pavement behind her. He couldn't risk the unstable woman turning on the lad and shooting. He leapt forward to grab the gun away from her. Flint struck still, the flash of powder igniting dispersed the darkness. A deafening sound reverberated through his entire being, and the scent of sulfur filled his nose. As if someone kicked his legs out from beneath him, he fell forward and slammed against the pavement. His breath exploded from his lungs. The cold, damp ground perme permeated his upper body, contrasting with the heat burning through his lower half, burrow burrowing into, his into the core of his marrow. The warmth waned, seeped out of him until it pooled on the pavement below him, leaving an instruction. A stringent, knife-like pain in his wig. His eyes drifted closed, closed from, and Laura's lovely face flashed before his mind's eye. Forgive me, my love. Adele's retreating footsteps clicking against the pavement drew his mind back to the present. He forced his heavy lids open. A bright, almost blinding light besieged him just before a strange wolf in darkness settled over him, sucking him into a state of peaceful mindless oblivion that is a very good chapter and typically whenever i'm buying books whenever i'm renting books if the author can grab me by the first chapter it's a really really good book and i read a ton of specifically historical romance this will be the first book in the series this book just came out february 2018 never dare wicked earl by renee ann miller I don't have any of her books. I've never heard of her, but it's something that draws me in. I typically don't go for stories where they start with a male. I love starting with a heroine, but this is a very, very promising read. And if I was judging this book by its first chapter, I would read the second chapter, definitely. Thank you for watching, YouTube. I'll be back. Um, I'm going to try to do every Wednesday. Look for videos, at least one, maybe a couple. Um, you can meet my cats, Lord Grayson always cries near my bedroom door. Um, thank you for watching. See you next time. Subscribe, comment, like. Thank you.